This is just a perfect steak. Best of both worlds. I mean, look at that. That's perfect. Juicy, tender. Mmm. A fillet and strip combo. Mmm. G'day, I'm Shuey. Welcome to Smoke Barbecue Sauce, where we hope to improve your barbecue game. Steaks are one of the most popular foods to grill. So today I'm grilling a porterhouse steak. So let's get into it. Selecting a porterhouse can be a daunting thing for some people. You are dealing with an ever increasing market of quality and brands. Not to mention two entirely different cuts of steak that you've got to cook at the same time. That being the New York strip and the filet mignon. Now what I personally look for is a good amount of intramuscular fat and I want a porterhouse that's an inch and a half thick. Also to be classified as a porterhouse, the fillet muscle needs to be more than an inch and a quarter thick from the bone to the outer edge on the thickest part. Now I find that is a good balance when selecting a porterhouse. With all that said, I chose this Black Onyx Steak or Black Angus Steak, which has a marble score of three plus for this video. It's around an inch and a half thick and weighing just over one and a half pounds. Now just make sure for a steak this size, you want to get it out of the fridge at least 30 minutes before you start cooking it. Otherwise, the center is still going to be cold when you start cooking it and you're going to overcook the outside. I'm a big believer in not overcomplicating flavors. A good piece of meat does not need 30 ingredients applied to it. We are paying for quality. By all means, enhance it, but don't overpower it. So how do we enhance it? By adding some good quality kosher salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And this is freshly ground. I just did it into the bowl to make it quicker for the video. How easy was that? Nearly as easy as giving this video a like. Today, I'm gonna to be using a 22 inch Weber kettle and I'm gonna be pairing it up with a Vortex because I wanna heat up a flat top griddle up to searing temp for this steak. And how I'll do that is I will three quarter fill a chimney starter with briquettes and light them up. Once they're fully ashed over, I'm gonna dump them into the Vortex. So I'll put the grill back in place and add a flat top griddle. I'll then put the lid on, opening all the vents, and I'm gonna give that griddle 10 minutes to warm up. If you don't own a flat top griddle, you can use a cast iron pan as well. That griddle is nice and hot now. It's on around about 650 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's now steak cooking time. Now firstly, we just wanna oil that griddle. Oh, listen to that sizzle. That's what we want to hear. Now, I'm going to be cooking this porterhouse to a perfect medium. So, that's 145 Fahrenheit internally. Yet, I do not want to cook it to that exact temp. We are going to rest our steak, and as we're resting it, the temperature, that internal temp, keeps climbing. Every minute, we just want to keep flipping that steak. Oh, that's looking good. Just want to use an instant read thermometer to keep a check on that internal temp. Now I want to take this steak off when it reaches 141 degrees Fahrenheit internally. Time to take it off. So we want a medium cooked steak cooked internally to 145. Yet yeah, we took it off at 141. Why? Because as we rest the steak, it's going to climb up three to four degrees in the first five minutes. So if we took it off at 145, it'd keep climbing and it'd be overdone. Now there's no reason to cover with foil. Foil is bad in conductivity. The fact is, it actually doesn't retain any heat. It'll hold in steam though. Don't believe me? Heat up some foil, take it away from the heat. Within seconds, it's cold again. Now if you do wish to add some extra flavor, Now's the perfect time while that steak is resting. All the fibers are relaxing and all the juice is getting redistributed right throughout that steak again. You can make it as simple as adding some unsalted butter or if you've made some compound butter up, you can add some of that. What is compound butter? Butter with flavor. Any ingredient that you wanna to add to that butter. This is my whiskey butter. The way to make it will be linked in the description. Now you don't need a lot, 
Just one piece will do. Our steak has rested. It is finally time to cut into it. Using a sharp knife, we just want to separate the two muscles from the bone. I'm not waiting any longer now. I'm going in for a taste. I think a piece of the fillet first. <laughs> wow. And now some of the New York strip. Both so flavorful, but so different. That fillet is so tender. And the beefy flavor that comes off that New York strip, this is just a perfect steak. Best of both worlds. I mean, look at that. That's perfect. Juicy, tender. Mm. If you'd like to check this recipe out a little further, there is a link in the description to the website that has a wealth of barbecue knowledge. Cheers. Thanks for watching.